Good morning. Uh, this morning we have a question from uh, a young lady asking, what is the deal with the Sabbath in the Bible being on a Saturday and now Christians say that the Sabbath is on Sunday? Who's right or are they both right or are they both wrong? That's a good question and it is one that if you're paying attention in the Bible when you read it, you're going to see that it does uh, appear to change and you know like what what's the deal with that let me move the camera over there there we go so I'm looking at you that I cannot see right now anyway all right uh, let's see okay so the original Sabbath was without a doubt on a Saturday it says in the Bible that on the seventh day God rested and then it says in the law of Moses that you know at the end of the week on the Sabbath you're going to rest and to keep that day holy. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. All through the Bible you'll find that that original Sabbath day was in fact on a Saturday. Okay. Uh, in the Mosaic Law, and in the, the, way the Bible day, and you get this actually at creation if you pay attention when you read it, uh, the day starts in the evening and ends the next day. So it starts in the evening. Okay, our evening and day is not exactly in the same way it's, it's meant there, uh, but you have like morning, evening, morning starting at sundown all the way, and, and that's kind of interesting too because in the New Testament it says Jesus rose early in the morning to pray, and a lot of times people will teach that if you want to be like Jesus, you've got to get up early in our morning, but in reality he was getting up uh, probably around 11 o'clock at night, or midnight, even even late, maybe even nine o'clock at night, he rose to go to prayer. So he's actually staying up later in our modern day concept of night and day. Don't get too confused by that, but it, it, you have to kind of understand a little bit of that to kind of get where we're going with this. All right. So Jesus raises himself from the dead on the first day of the week, which we know is Sunday. Yes. Okay. And and it says in Acts that the Christians worshipped on the Lord's day, which is Sunday. Okay, that's not Saturday, that's Sunday. Alright, so it seems like there's like a contradiction going on, and some people will argue that, but there's not really a contradiction going on, and we'll, we'll show you that in a second. Um, I believe, as you know, a lot of the really careful people who really look at this carefully, understanding the Jewish concept of the day and the bi biblical concept of a day, that Jesus rose from the dead on what would be considered biblically Saturday evening, which is technically Sunday, because Saturday evening would be like Saturday at sundown. I believe Jesus rose from the dead right at sundown or right after sundown. He rose from the dead. His tomb is found Sunday morning in our sense, but really Sunday morning in a biblical sense started Saturday at sundown. So I might throw in a graphic uh, with this video. I'll attach a graphic to this video showing how that works. Just to try to help uh, anyone who's confused. But Jesus did raise himself from the dead on Sunday. But he also, you know, I guess if, if you were looking at it back then, we would consider it to be Sunday or Saturday evening. But in reality, he raises himself from the dead on Sunday morning. So I'll throw in a graphic and hopefully that will clear that up for somebody. But what the point of that is, his empty tomb is discovered Sunday morning. All right. Now, the question is, should Christians worship on the Sabbath, Saturday, or worship on the Lord's Day? Okay, that's kind of where you've got to go with that if you want to take it logically. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Sabbath has been moved to Sunday. And nowhere in the Bible, you will never find that. If you do, please uh, comment and post that on here. I'd love to see that. But there, it isn't there. Uh, it does say, however, the Sabbath is there. And nowhere does it say the Sabbath has been moved. Okay, and we know the Sabbath is Saturday. All right, however, the Bible does have a bit to say about the fulfillment of Sabbath. Okay, now stay with me. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists teach that Christ uh, rose on Saturday, and therefore that is the Lord's Day, and that's really the first day of the week, and we should worship on that day. Um, 
that's not what the Bible teaches. And I'm not trying to bash anyone out there who's a seven-day Adventist, but that's just not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the Sabbath is Saturday, the first day of the week is Sunday. Okay, and Jesus rose on a Sunday, and they worshipped on the first day of the week. Okay? All right. There's two reasons why that view of seven-day Adventism is wrong, and, and mainly it, it's factually incorrect on two issues, and I'm trying to lovingly point this out. It was never scripturally moved. That was done by the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church moved Sunday officially as the Sabbath day. That teaching was echoed all throughout the Reformation by the Reformers. I'm not blaming them for that. They were the ones primarily in charge of, of teaching Christian doctrine at that time, and they, they taught that and echoed that. And even to this day, they call Sunday the Sabbath, and Sabbath school, the Sabbath services. And I, you know, I'm not attacking them for that at all. I'm just telling you where that comes from. Okay. Secondly, uh, the Scriptures clearly teach that Christ rose on the first day of the week, and that's when they worshipped. Okay, so I mean you can't really argue with that. That's Sunday. Okay, so that Saturday being this being the worship day, you know, you can't really make that argument. So what do we do with Saturday's Sabbath? What do we do with it? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the Sabbath in the scriptures has always been a picture, even at creation, it was always a picture of the rest and the final cessation of God's work that would one day come because of a Messiah and a Redeemer who would would do the work of redemption and sit down and rest. And it says when Jesus finished his redemptive work, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, something no priest had ever been able to do before because they're always continually offering sacrifices. The work for covering sins is never done in the Old Testament. It's never finished. There's no chair in the temple. There's no chair in the holy place. They're always to be ministering and walking and, and working. When Jesus does his ministry in heaven after he raises from the dead, he ascends to the Father and he ministers in the heavenly temple. Then he comes back down and appears to the disciples. When he finishes his priestly ministry, he sits down. He is our intercessor, he is our mediator, but he is not currently atoning for sins. That is all done when he says it is finished, and when he takes his blood and puts it on the mercy seat of heaven, that work is done. There's no more atonement for sin. You can't get saved again and again and again. It's over. It's done. Once you're saved, you are saved because that blood of Christ is eternal. It is the perfect sacrifice. God is totally satisfied, and Jesus never again has to do that. Because his blood is sufficient. Okay, so all that to say, uh, the Sabbath has always been a picture of that. When Christ did that, he fulfilled the Hebrew feast Shabbat or Sabbath. He fulfilled the biblical Sabbath. And you don't really hear of Sabbath being kept after that. You will hear of Sabbath days, the special days of feast and ceremony, things like that. That you will hear, even Paul mentions that. But the Sabbath as a, a holiday that must be kept under the law, you don't see that uh, particularly. Now, I'm not advocating that we don't have to keep Sundays holy and reverent. I think we ought to keep Sundays and holy and reverent. The Bible indicates that uh, it is very good to have a day of rest and a day of worship. God knew that we needed that. If you work all week, you need a day to rest. You need a day to reflect on God. You need a day to worship God. And you need a day to just spend time with your family and praise the Lord. And that's exactly uh, under what Christ did. Sunday has become that day of rest for us. But the Sabbath, per se, in the Bible was fulfilled by Jesus, which is what he said. He said, I haven't come to abolish anything. I have, however, come to fulfill it. And so I do believe that he has fulfilled the Sabbath in that sense. Okay, so what day should someone worship on? Well, I don't think that God is going to be offended if someone worships on Saturday. I'm not, I'm not blasting people who do that. Uh, I don't know their heart uh, and, they, and, and their understanding. They may be obeying the Bible as best they understand it, so I'm not blasting that. I, I don't think God is offended that you worship on Saturday instead of Sunday. But I think if you try to say that, if you try to make a biblical case for that, you're not going to succeed. The biblical model is Sunday. The biblical fact is Sunday. So I, ha I would have a hard time um, trying to argue that from Scripture. You're not going to do it. Um, but if somebody does that, I'm not going to be mean to them. I'm, we're going to still be friends. Um, you know, but biblically, they don't have a case there. Okay, And I would try to help them understand that. But then again, 
Um, okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see. Lastly, okay, so God does want us to rest at the end of the week. We already kind of covered that. Um, it is considerate of him and beneficial to us to do so. If you don't rest in the week, you're going to you're going to wear out and you're going to spiritually suffer for that. Uh, if you are tired all the time, your spiritual life is not going to succeed. You are going to uh, crash, and that can involve a spiritual crash as well. Uh, but the observance of a Mosaic Law Sabbath, or a Hebraic Sabbath, is fulfilled in Christ. Christ fulfilled that. He is my rest. He is my day of society. When, when Christ did what he did, he rested, okay? And that was a picture of the, of the messianic work that he was going to do all along. It was pictured in the Sabbath. Uh, we do need a day of worship. We do need a day of, of cheerful worship and service. It's not a day of drudgery where we have to keep the Sabbath day and we can't do any work. We can't walk so many steps. We can't, uh, if somebody needs help over here, we can't run over and help them because we're working on the Sabbath. Jesus showed the uh, Pharisees, that it is okay to do good on the Sabbath. It is okay to minister on the Sabbath. So Sunday ought to be a day of ministry. It ought to be a day of rest. It ought to be a day of worship, uh, cheerful worship. And it ought to be a day of praise. Uh, so anyone that goes away with this saying that I'm teaching that you shouldn't hold Sunday as a, as a special day, that's not at all what I'm teaching. Um, I'm teaching that Sunday ought to be a very special day. It ought to be a very reverent day. It ought to be a, a very joyful day, a happy day, because we get to go to church. We get to meet other believers. We get to rest. We get to spend time with our families during the day and reflect on what God's done. And that is, to the best of my understanding, uh, the answer to your question there. And uh, thank you for submitting that. Please submit questions. Please share these if you find these interesting. Uh, any questions allowed, we, we will deal with it all. And if I don't know the answer, I'll just straight up tell you or get you to somebody who does. I hope you have a wonderful day.